Well, as you can see, I'm all set up. Medellin's ready to film the next episode of the vlog with Rob. And there's one main ingredient missing from the vlog, and that is Rob. Nowhere to be seen. Nowhere to be seen. I'm all set up nice. All ready to go. But no sign of Roberto yet. So, hopefully he'll be here soon. And uh, we can get cracking. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're off on another trip out with my good mate Smokey Joe. This time we're at Netherlands. Um, Joe has got the um, first round of the Silverfish League this Saturday. It's a big, quite a big match, some big hitters fishing, top anglers, and obviously Joe wants to do well. So, he's getting a sneaky practice session in today. I said I'd pop along with my kit, obviously hoping that two heads are better than one, and um, catch some silverfish. Importantly, I think we've got to work out how to avoid the carp, because there's loads of carp in Midlands, and I think for a lot of the anglers, that's going to be a problem. Obviously, once you start feeding a lot of bait, you're going to attract some carp. And the fact that they don't count, you know, obviously we don't want to keep we don't want to keep attracting carp, or at least we don't want to keep hooking them. So I'm about five or ten minutes away. I've dropped one lad off at school, one son off round his grandparents' house. So I'm running a little bit late. No doubt Joe's twiddling his thumbs sitting on the bank. I'm hoping he's picked a couple of good pegs for us to sit on. I don't know. I haven't got a clue what lake we're going to go on. There's two lakes there. All I do know is Joe's guaranteed me loads of bites and he's guaranteed me a good day. So let's see what he's up to. Right, well, while we're waiting for Rob to get here, um, I've got all my kit set up and I thought I'd just run you through the baits that I've chosen for today on Warren Pool. I came a few weeks ago for a practice and uh, I really found that I couldn't really catch where I'd found any worms or ground bait. Um, it's ever so shallow this lake, it's less than three foot. Um, and it's quite silty, so I don't know whether that played a part. So what I've done, with that in mind, I've just gone down a simple route. Pellets were brilliant last time, so I've got myself a pint and a half, two mils, fishery two mils, soak them up. Got some four mil expanders for the hook. I did some two mils and three mil expanders last time, the tiny little ones, which looked dead right, but couldn't really catch on them. The bigger four mils were better, so I've just gone simply down the four mil route. I've got some maggots. They are live, but they're just gonna take a bit of coming around. They've been in the fridge. But yeah, they're live maggots, just for the hook. I've got some dead pinkies for the hook. And then finally, I've got some casters. Quite a few casters, I've got some more in the thing, in my bucket, just in case, but I've, last time I felt the fish wanted to eat casters more than anything else, to be fair. Um, I can loose feed them on the waggler, I can loose feed them on the pole. Just a great bait to have, you know, you're gonna catch skimmers. A lot of small fish in here that you've got to catch. You know, you're looking to catch 50 to 100 fish on here to do well. There's not so many bream in this lake compared to the other one, so uh, been not too choosy and fishing baits like casters could be the way to go. I have mixed some ground bait up, I've just got some sweet fish meal ground bait there. Just in case, I've only done a pint, there's only a pint of ground bait there. That's all I'm going to need. I'm just, if anything, if it's not going to plan, I'll just cup in tiny little balls, lace with casters. Maybe a few worms later on just to try it, but other than that I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to stick to these. I'm going to feed two lines on the pole, one with casters, one with pellets, and then casters on the waggler. Simple as that. Now, as this lake's so shallow, um, I don't think there's going to be a lot of short pole work, so what I've done, I've set up two pole lines, at both at 40 and a half metres, one to the left, one to the right. One's going to be fed with casters, one's going to be fed with pellets, as simple as that. Um, it's quite shallow, this lake, so, you know, it's, it's probably just three foot today. Um, so I've set two rigs up, just to give me a, a, a bit of a, you know, some different shot plants to play around with. Because it is so shallow though, it can tow quite bad this lake, I'm led to believe. Last, when I came practicing the other week, it, it wasn't, it was just like this, flat calm, and it didn't tow, but I just want to try a heavier rig just in case. So I've got a 4x14 Preston Silvers float, carbon stem, nice fine tip. Um, it's got a back shot above it, one's directly below it, and then I've got a bulk, two number 10 droppers, as simple as you like. Size 18 Preston PR412 hook, Probably the most underrated hook out there. Um, superb silvers pattern. It's very, very good when you when you might catch some big perch because big perch can come off regularly on you know on normal bar uh, barbers hooks. So for some reason the, the slightly longer shank on this hook just seems to keep that hook hole in place. Number five elastic, and then the second rig 
The old faithful, 4x12 Chianti. Strung out number 11s. Same hook, same line, same elastic. As easy as that. The third line, and one that I caught really well on last time, is the waggler. Now, with it being so shallow, it kind of lends itself to, to the waggler. Rob's going to try the, try the feeder, but I'm going to fish the waggler. I caught on it very well last time. Um, just a 13 foot waggler rod. Um, O13 main line, nice and light. Um, got quite an interesting waggler connection on there. Because I'm fishing O13 main line for great presentation and ease of casting, um, I've got like a little link that I've made. I'll show, I'll show you that on the zoom, you know, on the close up. But um, it just, just means that I don't have any big locking shot on my main line, which could potentially damage it. Instead, I've got a series of gripper stops, which just means that um, you know, I can move the depth about quite a lot without ever damaging the line. Um, what is it? 5BB waggler. So nice insert, nice hollow yellow tip, and I've dotted that right down. Um, below that, I've just got three number 10s spread out. 010 hook length, size 18 hook. Um, just dead simple. I've plumbed that up using a two, two SSG shot. I just pinch it onto the hook, have a cast about, and just have it so that the flow only just pops up when I've cast it out. So uh, it takes a bit of time to get it dead right, but at least you know you're as close to dead depth as, as possible. It's pretty flat, this lake, so I always set it up the same as my polar rigs as a guide and then work from there. Um, but yeah, that's it. I think we should get some bait in. Rob could be a while yet, so uh, I'm going to get a bit of bait in and have a little fish. Right, I'm going to get a bit of bait in. Um, like I say, I'm going to feed two pole lines. So what I'm going to do first though, is feed my waggler swim. Now, obviously, I can, can only really feed that with a catty, so I've got myself a nice strong catty. Um, and I'm just going to lose feed casters. I'm not even that concerned about being accurate. I have got myself a far bank marker, that big tree in the middle. And just as far as the, the catapult will go, just going to lose feed casters. They're going to go everywhere, but I don't mind that because it gives me an area to search with the waggler. Um, I'm just going to give it a few, a few sort of loose feeds just to get a bit of bait out before I feed my pole line. I'm going to start on the waggler, so I want a bit of bait in. On the pole, I'm going to put in half a pot of casters. Just get them in there. I think I'm going to feed the casters to the left. It's a bit nicer for shipping there, and if I do catch some smaller roach, I can whiz back dead quickly. Just got a fire bank marker, important that. Light's quite bad on here, so you need to find yourself some nice areas. I've just put quite a few casters in there. I'm going to probably fish the wagon for an hour and a half. So, um, I'm not too bothered about putting quite a large amount of bait in. The same with pellets. There's no place, I don't think, on here for. I see the pellets as the last two hour bait, so I need plenty of bait in there to attract, hold, and let the fish graze for quite a while. So I'm going to put a full pot of micros in and just leave it. I'm not going to top it up or anything, just let it do its work. Right, again, power bank market. Got that big tree there. Is that where I'm going to put it? Yeah. Get them in. Nice and accurate. Pop them in and just look, I'm just going to leave them. Right, let's get on that waggler. See if we get a bite first. Look. Caught some fish straight away last time, so i just to see if it's the same. Come on then, Smoker. Tell me why you've brought me here. Well, start the uh, Silverfish League starts at the weekend. Okay. So we thought it'd be an ideal chance to come and have a little play. Medellin's Fishery. Yeah. Big hitters on this league, isn't there? Some big, big hitters. Boys, really yeah. good anglers, yeah. It's a, it's a really List, good league. Tell me some names. Tell me some guys on this league. Steve Emingray. Yeah. Darren Cox. Big hitters, big, big hitters. Big hitters. Sean Ashby. Yeah. Simon Wilsmore. So you're fishing against the England team, basically. Fishing against very good guys. So you're going to need some practice. I'm going to need some help. <laughs> right. I've only fished one match here yep. ever. I've fished it on the big lake, and that was a silverfish match. I fished two matches here on that lake, right. silverfish matches. So we've got no experience between us None. of this lake behind None. us. Other than a little cheeky practice I had before Christmas. Right, so you put in a bit of practice. Only time. once, yeah. Okay. Um, Warren Pool this is, isn't it? Yeah, Warren Pool. We're sitting on the point over there. Yeah. Apparently they're good pegs, are they? Apparently they're good pegs. It's freezing cold, isn't it? Okay. Mm, yeah, it is cold. Very but cold. I think it's... Reflection of the time, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it's winter at the end of the day. Um, You've already had a go for a half an hour. <laughs> I've already had a go. Because I've had a pram malfunction. You've had a pram malfunction. On, on the way here. Yeah. 
Um, I've only had one little perch, but that big. So it's not looking great. It's not looking it? solid. But I think once, well, it doesn't look like the sun's going to come out. I don't know, it's, it's brightening up yeah, now, isn't it? It's getting a little bit warm. It is cold. Air temperature's cold. Real right down, isn't it? Yeah. But this is what we're up against, isn't it? What, is, what would you say would be a good weight? On just a, just a view well, I spoke to Simon Wilsman about this the other day, and he reckons if you can catch twelve pound for the first two or three rounds, okay, you'd be right. You're hanging, is it on weight? No, it's on points. It's on but points. he thinks twelve pound, you know, you'd be all right on right. both lakes. Okay, talk me through your approach because it's going to be a slightly different to mine. Obviously. Yeah, well, I came before Christmas and I fished waggler and two pole lines, hmm. one with pellets, one with casters. Well, I fished it with ground bait to be fair, and uh, the ground bait one wasn't great, so I've changed that today to just feeding casters. Castles on the waggler and pellets on another pole line, and that's so, it. So purely like a loose feed approach. Yeah. yeah. And um, do you th did you catch anything on pellets? I caught really well on pellets off sand. Did you? Yeah, right, really okay. well. I've come with a non. Lot of skimmers like that you see in here. So. Well, I've come with a non pellet attack. Yeah. I've bought some casters, some maggots, some pinkies. Yeah. I've got a few worms. Um, bit of ground bait. Up, but apparently worms aren't great. Well, they weren't last time. It was a bit kiss of death, but. Different day. Isn't different it? day. So I've got some worms. You're obviously going to set up a waggler. Now, I've got a waggler rod, yep. and I've got wagglers, but it's very rare to see the light of day. You like feeder fishing, so don't I you? So I chuck a feeder. Yep. So I'm chucking my little three square feeder. Yep. I think I can chuck it. Obviously, I've plumbed up. It's mega shallow. I couldn't believe how shallow it is. It's less than three foot, isn't it? Um, I couldn't believe how shallow it is. I'll tell you what, I can't believe we're going to catch anything on the pole today. Yeah. So I've gone further on the feeder, um, try and get a bit further bit of an area. Bank, yeah, yeah. bank side disturbance. Set a little trap. Little ground bait feeder, dark ground bait important. Yeah. I think um, single maggot, single pinky, double yeah. pinky, small baits, and just fish for bites. And then I'm going to fish the pole. Yeah. Um, I've got a pole line like 14 meters, but in that depth of water, if we catch any fish on the I pole, I think it'd be late, wouldn't it? Well, this is what I'm going to say to you: if we catch any fish <laughs> on the pole today, yeah. in that depth of water, yeah. two and a half foot, yeah. I will show my ass out my man window <laughs> driving out the car park. All right, okay. Right. Oh, you could, best get your ass ready. I just can't believe that we'll I think we will, I think we will, because it's just like that, this lake. Yeah, okay. Um, I think it'll be late on, though. I think it'll be late on. Right, okay. But, but yeah. Right. Let's go and have a look at the kit. Yeah. Right. Right. I've just been walking back to my peg, and I can't help but notice you've got a new toy. I've got a very nice... What's going on? ...shiny... New pole. ...XZ65. It's my new pole. Yeah. Obviously, my old pole was looking a bit tired. Um, it's seen better Battle days. One. I needed a new pole. Um, everyone knows I get on really well with the guys at Midair. Yeah. So, just basically give them a call. So I need a new pole. What's um, what 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 is the what is there in the range? You know the backstory. Yeah. I, I helped heavily developing the XK55. Yeah. Sort of four, five, six years ago. And I would say that at the time. It was a massive leap forward for not just for MIDI's pole design, but I for everybody's that's pole design. Helped kicked on the industry. Yes. So pole wise, that was this is on the same mandrel as that pole. Yeah. I know the pole inside out, and this is just a, a next. You know, four or five years later, we've come to this point. Yeah. And it's a beautiful bit of kit. For me, I held it in the <laughs> showroom. This don't get me wrong, I've not fished with it yet, but I held it in the showroom because they said come and have a look at it. I held it in the showroom, and I thought that's amazing. I, put a, I did put a short four in and a, and a F1 kit, kit. Yeah. so obviously you're cheating, but I just thought that's amazing. That's how a lot of people fish now. Now, at the minute, obviously I'm not really attached to anybody. I can use what I want in theory. Yeah. I'm really pleased with this. Today's going to be the proof of the pudding. Yeah. I know I'm not going to put it under loads of pressure today because I'm only using like a single six elastic. Yeah. But you get a feel for it. I'm going to get a feel for it. I'm going to strike hard. I'm going to see if it collapses on me. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah, well, let's hope not, but I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with it, just holding it in the showroom. I mean, it's poker stiff. It is poker stiff. Poker stiff. I think if you put a pen on the end at 60 metres, I could write my name. Probably That's probably better than I could with yeah, my writing. Definitely better than my writing. My writing's atrocious. So I'm looking forward to it. So, do you want to have a look at your rigs and stuff? And yeah, then let's do some, it. Get some fish caught. Let's do it. Well, hopefully. Right then, folks, let's talk about my rigs that I'm using today. Pole first. I mean, it's... It's not even three foot deep out there, so I've gone for a 4 by 12 float, 012 main line. I've got strung out number 10 stots down the line. The float is a 4 by 12 Malman Duster. It's 
it's got a flexi wire stem only because not for the robustness but because the flexi wire is slightly lighter than wire and it's sort of an in-between wire and carbon as in you know sink rate single six elastic hook length wise i've got 08 and i've got a size 18 Preston 412 hook, barbless 412 hook. Really nice hook for this style of fishing. I'm guessing, you know, I'm going to be using double pink air, single maggot, single caster, and that setup will be fine. I'm also guessing that quite a few of my bites are going to be coming just as my bait settles. So I'm going to be loose feeding either with a pot or with a catapult. So obviously the fish are going to be intercepting bait as it falls. So that strung out pattern should be, should be perfect. Feeder wise, I'm going to start off with a little three hole cage, really lightweight cage feeder. I don't want a, a, a loud plop when it goes in the water. As I say, it's only ever so shallow out there. That's just free running on the main line. I've stopped it with two stops and then I've got a twizzled boom, twizzled loop where I've attached my hook length. Hook length at the minute, there you go, 50 centimetres. It's quite a long hook length for commercial fishery work, I suppose, but. I like to start off on the long hook length, go out on the side of caution, and then obviously we can shorten that down if the fish start feeding quite aggressively, which, the, judging by the nighttime temperatures, I don't think they're going to be going mad today. So I reckon that slightly longer hook length is going to work. Bait wise, I've got some nice dark ground bait, that's actually swim stim black. Fish meal mixes work really well on commercials, whether it's summer or winter. I think the fish are just really tuned into fish meal, so I don't really mind using a, quite a strong fish meal mix, in, in, even in the winter time. As long as you sieve it nice, sieve it after you've um, after you've mixed it. I mean, riddle it after you've mixed it, you'll be fine. I've got some pinkies, some maggots, some casters. You'll notice the tubs aren't even half full. I don't expect to feed loads of bait today, just enough to trigger a response really. So, that's the kit and the bait. Let's get a bit of fishing done. We've got Rob's here now. We're fishing. Just got going, and we've started catching a few fish. Rob just had one. I've just had three or four little hybrids, actually. Well, nice hybrids on the waggler. So it's just gone from no bites at all to you know regular bites, which is nice. But um. Just shows you that you know it does feel a little bit warmer and time of day as well it's brighter than it has been so just fishing a single maggot on the hook at least feeding casters try caster again in a minute but obviously a maggot's a bit more durable but de delicate little dips on the floats so it's important to have that dotted down There we go. Another fish on the waggler. It's um, so shallow that it's no wonder you can sometimes catch a few fish and then it goes a bit quiet. It's a nice fish, so it doesn't matter. And with a 12 pound sort of tag it weight, certainly don't mind catching fish that size. Lovely fish. Nice skimmer. I've seen rack of weight up at them if they. Sort of turned up and had a bit of a chomp. It's so cold, my maggots are still not wriggling, which is a bit annoying because I do like a live maggot for skimmers. Not to worry. So I've had four or five chucks now on this little three, three square feeder. And I've had three fish, two little skimmers and a roach. Joe started catching as well on the waggler. So obviously, just as the sun started to poke through the clouds a little bit, we've started to get a few bites. It's not hectic, but one that just as soon as it hit the surface, and then I've had to wait then for the rest of my bites. And I just get the feeling that later on in the day, there will be a few few fish to be caught. I'm not leaving, it in, not leaving the feeder in for too long. Sort of like three, four minutes each, each cast. And I had every fish so far on just uh, two pinkies, just double pinky, double fluoro pinky. Size 16 hook, 012 hook length. 
but it's quite nice fishing it's there goes another one there look and they're nice fish as well they're sort of like 10 or 12 ounce fish the skimmers Obviously, with it being so shallow, as soon as you pull into a fish, you can see it sort of swirl on the surface out there. So shallow out there. Can't believe that any fish are feeding. Obviously, as always with your skimmers, nice and low to the water. Keep the rod really low to the water. There it is. Nice little fish. And Joe reckons sort of like 12 to 15 pounds a good weight. So I'm guessing that's sort of like 20, 25, 25 of these fish. He's probably nearly a pound, that, that little fish there. 14 ounce I'd give him. So it's not many fish. And it'd just be interesting to see as well as the day goes on, the stamp of my fish compared to Joe's. Obviously Joe's fishing a waggler and Pole predominant there. And if I start catching some better quality fish, it'd just be interesting to see the stamp difference. Just putting in the, in the feeder, probably like six or seven pinkies, just as a little taster of my hook bait. Chucking it 25 metres. Right on the rest. Trying to use the lightest feeder possible as well in that shallow water. Well, one thing that's come immediately obvious is that that day I had before Christmas was obviously a bit of a red letter day because although there is bites to be had, it was absolutely lifting that day. Um, fish a truck, like 40 pounds sort of class fishing. And it was in December, it was the 22nd of December, so it was still cold, but it was obviously a little bit of a mild spell. And it's noticeable that day, there was carp topping everywhere. So obviously whatever happened that day, it was, uh, the fish had obviously woke up for whatever reason and had a real good feed before this cold snaps, you know, came out over winter when we had a lot of snow and, and all that rubbish that we had. Um, whereas today is just a proper cold winter's day. And it's taken, I mean, what time is it? 12 o'clock, so it's, you know, it's taken me two and a half hours to get catching anything today, which I suppose if the match fit starts at half ten, hour and a half in, you won't mind that. So something to think about and on these winter sessions, getting here early, you know, sometimes you don't get, the fish are still, you know, the water's still so cold that you just don't catch. So something to bear in mind for the guys who, you know, want to go to pleasure fishing, sometimes just go, Coming in the afternoons, but you, you know your best bet for a good few hours spot. Well, here's a tur turn up for the books. Fed a line off at 16 meters because I just couldn't see it happening. A bit of an emergency move before I started catching on the waggler. Put a little nugget of ground bait in with a few pinkies in, similar to what Rob's done on the feeder, I guess. Put a single maggot over the top, and I've got one. First chuck. So. Rob best bear his ass out of his van, I reckon. Do you reckon, Rob? Yeah. Get him up. Nice skimmer. On the pole. <laughs> Good sign, though. Can't believe it. I'm not going to feed it, I'm just going to go back in. So, just pick, picked a new swim, just put a little nugget in. 16 metres though, so. Let's have another little look. It's one thing you, when fishing like this, you don't need to be in a rush to feed it again. Sometimes just being a bit patient with the feed and trying to catch another one before topping it up is the best way. Because you don't actually need that much bait in your peg to catch skimmers. Despite what people might tell you about filling it in, it's often quite the opposite works.
something that always amazes me is the reaction of different fish to different baits. So I've switched to a pole. Joe's put some ground bait in, a few pinkies on one line, and he's caught some skimmers. He's put some pellets in, and he's caught some skimmers. I've loose fed casters from sort of the start of the session for, at 14 meters, and I'm getting, okay, I'm waiting, I'm waiting a little bit for my bites, but I'm getting a fish every chuck, but they're all roach, rud, little perch, and I've not caught a skimmer yet. And it just surprises me with the amount of fish, the amount of skimmers in this lake, that they still show a preference for certain baits. And obviously if you don't get that right on the, on the day, you could be miles behind. So obviously the trouble is today, I'm getting bites every chuck and I'm catching far faster than Joe, but my fish are much smaller. Every fish that Joe's catching is sort of six ounce plus with the odd chunky fish on the pole, sort of like a 10 ouncer. Whereas all my fish are two ounce a piece. One thing's for sure, the pole is playing nicely. Nice and stiff, hitting the bites. Lovely, lovely shipping out through the hands, really smooth. Got my float dotted right down. The light is terrible. There's another little fish. The light on this lake is terrible because you've got the trees, you've got the trees behind, and it's causing all sorts of shadows on the water. I imagine that when there's any sort of wind causing a ripple on the water, seeing your floats, seeing your floats impossible. Right, well, done something we didn't think would happen. And it might mean that Rob's lost the bet, but just had one on pellet. Pound and a half, a proper fish. So that was a good sign. Had a few fish on that 16 metre line that I put in with a bit of a ball of ground bait, that's been quite good. I thought, just fed it, thought I'll have myself a cup of tea and uh, try my pellet line while I'm waiting. Didn't expect it to go under and she buried. Proper fish as well, so very good sign. Oh, there we go, just as it looked like it wasn't going to go under. Another nice skimmer. These fish are, you know, lovely stamps, so you can see how last hour you could have a bit of a rally and put the weight together. So I think if you've started on that little feeder like Rob's done, it's a nice safe bet to catch you a few fish, get your match up and running, and then feed your pole lines with the hope that it sort of comes together. Nice fish. Nice skimmer. Small in the first one, but very welcome. I mean, the trouble is, this just isn't, I'm waiting so long to catch a two ounce fish. It's just not gonna be the way to go in a match situation. The only thing I would say is I've tried to keep up in the feed as the session's gone on, hopefully. Some bigger fish will come in, but it just doesn't seem to be, doesn't seem to be happening. You know, I started off feeding sort of like four casters every, every put in. Well, that's how I built the swim anyway. You know, four casters fed relatively frequently, but since I've been fishing it and catching these smaller fish, I've tried to up the feed and up the feed, trying to attract bigger fish, and it's just, it's just not happening. I mean, the reason I came on the pole line was just to rest the feeder line and that literally might be this pole line's job, just to be a resting line for the feeder. I imagine in the last hour, maybe it might be absolutely solid, but at the minute... At the minute, it doesn't look like that. Let's try laying it in that way. What do you reckon, Smoker? Not settling, are they? Yeah. 
they're not settling on anything. Back on the feeder. I've just been tapping this up with tiny little marbles of ground bait with just a few pinks in. Did a lot of this sort of fishing at Tunnel Barn last year. I know it's F1 fishing there normally, but I was drawing a few bad pegs. And on them pegs, you could pot in little balls and catch quite a few skimmers. I was catching up to 30 pound of them um, doing this. And one thing I've noticed with it, and it goes again, is um, if you feed big balls, thinking they'd last long it just doesn't seem to work as soon as you get any amount of bait on the bottom it just doesn't seem to work so being proactive and topping it up regular is better i also don't found it better not to use a kinder pot might sound a bit backward but that time between potting your ball and coming back baiting up and going back out just seems to allow them skimmers to settle i found anyway and it's quite awkward shipping back here i know rob keeps commenting on it Look, there's a, there, a nice fish they are. That's three off one feed. Few about now. I feel like that tiny little ball shouldn't be enough to hold any amount of fish, but for some reason. It does. Back out. But yeah, yeah, interesting session. Learnt a bit. Again, totally different to last time. I think this has been a much more closer reflection as to what to expect rather than the bagging up session that I had last time. So probably what I needed to come and see. This line's ever so good now. Loads of fish there. Nice fish as well. Five elastics, beautiful in this shallow water. It's just a bit awkward for shipping back though, which has lost, cost me a few fish, but never mind. Not to worry. This will be the fourth one off that one feed. I'll we'll try again. Lovely stamp fish. Soon rack a weight up at them. Just looks in the inside of the chops. Yeah. What do you reckon, Smokey? I think it's been quite interesting, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, this line's brilliant now. Is it? <laughs> Ground bait and pinkies, just topping up with little tiny balls. Right. Um, yeah, it's nice. It's, uh, well out of the way there, there, isn't it, as well? Mm. Obviously, I, start, I fed it halfway through the session, just out of desperation more than anything. And it's been really good. It's definitely been a case of the further out you've fished, the more fish yeah, you've caught, isn't 100%. it? Yeah, 100%. And uh, from what I've seen, that little feeder yeah. is nice, isn't it? And then. A 16 metre pole line, I think. I think you could set up a waggler just past your pole line, maybe. I don't yeah. know. You could, I think the you problem is you can do pole. too much, though, can't you? Yeah, you can, you're right. You can. Yeah. Um, and I think then, you know, you get on your pole lines late, late in the day and you're laughing, aren't you? I think I'd have caught really well on pellets if I'd have fished that further out. Right. But what, like a, a soft four mil? Yeah, I've caught two on it, but. Fent that 14 metres is just too close, isn't I did, it? I did, you know, last night I thought, do I have to come and fish a little pellet, a little open ender with pellets? Yeah, you like doing that, don't you? Yeah, I love doing that. I think it might have worked. You've had to wait for bites, but I think your fish would have been like 10 ounce to a pound instead of 6 ounce. Yeah. Because we don't have many big ones, have we? No, I've had probably two fish over a pound, three yeah. fish over a pound. But, um, be interested to see what it's like on Saturday, Yeah. Let's not well, you've been here enough, you should be knowing what you're doing now. Well, Two practice sessions. Two totally different days. Yeah. Which is good to see though, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. I just think, it, I just think it's amazing that I can feed a pole line, and to a lot of people you just say, oh, fish the pole. Yeah. <laughs> what you actually do with your feed is so, so important. different. So important. Makes every, every diff bit of difference, doesn't it? Yeah. 
So I've fed it, fished it in quite an active way, as in loose feeding, bait falling through the water. And obviously we all, we know that that's going to catch you some roach. But is it going to um, catch you skimmers? But I still would have thought I'd catch a few skimmers doing it. Not even that, not to even get a bite from one. Is, is it, I just think it's a bit strange. Mm. Well, whether it's, you know, just because you're not fishing far enough out is another big factor, I think. Yeah, well, I've got 14, that's 16, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, a, a full 16. I still think, you know, we're pleasure fishing, aren't we? Yeah, right? yeah. Especially yeah. this time of day. Yeah. You know, the light's going now, and it light's going, dropping quick now. And mm. Yeah, interesting. I'm going to have another half hour chucking a feeder, see if I can catch some bigger fish. And then yeah. What's I'll been your best update on the feeder? Double pinker. Double pinker. Yeah, double pinker. I had a quick go on maggots and you, you, the, just the bites weren't the same, but I'm putting pinkies through my feeder. Yeah. I always think that if you put in whatever you put yeah, through yeah. your feeder, that's going to be your best up bait. Right, just let out. Mm. Well, I'll let you carry on catching those little roach. I'll have another go. For a bream. Yeah, see if I catch them. Last, last fish I had on, on the feeder was nice. Nice fish. Even that, if you caught them, I want to chuck. catching on casters. Yeah, right? you'd have a, a weight, yeah, wouldn't if you? If you catch one of them, it'd be chuck, but I just weren't catching one a chuck. So shallow, isn't it, Rob? I think, Very shallow. I think, I think that's the challenge, isn't it? But what's happening is, I think... You catch a few of the spook. You catch a few, this spook, you have to move lines or do something else. Yeah, it's definitely not a one-line job, is it? No. That's the, that's the, the only thing that I'm definitely sure of. Yeah. Right, let me have another few chucks on a feeder. All right. Oh, lovely day, Rob. Yeah, beautiful day, mate. Really enjoyed it. I mean, I've not, I've not really got out really since Christmas. So <laughs> I mean, this is like just to get out on the bank. Yeah, it's lovely, cool. isn't it? It's noticeable, like you said, just said to me off camera. Not, totally different stamp of fish, isn't there? I've totally had a lot of like fish. these fish. Well, I've had a few of them. Look, that's probably my biggest fish, pound and a half. Yeah. I've had a few of them, but a lot of like that size. Yeah, sort of six ounces, f but five, six ounces. But let's be fair, you caught them early. Yeah. So if you combine that with the pole approach later on, you'd, yeah, have, a, I think, you'd have a lovely day. Yeah, if you've you? got £10 on the feed or going into the last sort of like hour and a half, and two hours. you start hours, catching these. Don't be wrong, we've only fished for what? <laughs> fish for? Three, three and a half hours, three hours? We've yeah. still had a decent amount of fish, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's over £15 there. Yeah, easy, easy, mate, easy. easy. So, so I think you're well on form going into the weekend. Well, let's I'm hope so. I'm expecting big things. Big things. Um, By big things, you mean... Blow out. No, no, <laughs> no I, think, I think we'll be all right. I'm expecting big things. I can see that your confidence is sky high. Yeah. Which is always good. Um, and I look forward to hearing about your results. Yeah, so uh, thanks for watching, everyone. And yeah. uh, where are we going to go next time? Um, we'll tell you what we're going to have to do. Put some practice in for Larford, aren't we? On Ooh, that feeder. Yeah. Um, sorry, the Golden, Golden Field feeder. Yeah, feed of, um, yeah. Final. Both yeah. qualified. Both qualified. Both qualified for that. So I think we need to put some practice in for the yeah, final. Yeah, definitely. So we'll see you there at Larford Lakes. Doodaloo.